Okay, so we've been talking about um, enthalpies of reaction, also sometimes called heat of reaction. And uh, so we're going to continue on with that. Um, for reasons that hopefully will become clear later, we need to talk about some relationships involving uh, enthalpy of reaction. So if we take a reaction, say this, uh, carbon plus oxygen to form carbon dioxide, this is one way of making carbon dioxide uh, by burning carbon. Um, we know we can measure the enthalpy change and it's minus 393.5 kilojoules. Now if I burn twice as much carbon, so two moles of carbon, it's reasonable that the heat release, the enthalpy of of the reaction is also doubled, right? Because you burn one piece of wood, it gives off some heat. You burn two pieces of wood, it gives off twice as much heat, right? So if we, if we mess with the equation, if we multiply the equation by two, we have to do the same thing to the heat of reaction, okay? If we reverse the reaction, so here's the same reaction, all we've done is reverse the reactants and products. Many reactions can also go in reverse. So here's carbon dioxide now coming apart to form carbon and oxygen. Well, when it went from carbon to carbon dioxide, it released energy. If it goes the other way, it's going to absorb energy, and it has to be the same amount of energy because energy is conserved. You okay with that? So if we reverse the reaction, then we change the sign. If a reaction can be expressed as a series of steps, then delta H for the overall reaction is the sum of the delta H's for each individual step. And this is true because H is a state function. How we get there doesn't matter. So this, um, this diagram is not super clear. The overall reaction here is A plus 2B going to 2D, where A, B, and D, and C are just standing in for chemical formulas. So if we want to know the enthalpy change going from A plus 2B to 2D, but perhaps we can't measure that directly. If we know the enthalpy change uh, going to C and then from C to D, it's going to be the same number. Does that make sense? Yesterday's explanation was better, but I don't remember what it was. It's, um, oh, now I remember. So say we're um, climbing a mountain, right? And uh, we want to look at the elevation change from where we start to where we end up. So this is the elevation change right here. That is equal to the highest point we had to go up to, and then we came down a little bit. So if we add this, oops, didn't mean to do that. If we add this positive, where's my pointer? If we add this positive elevation change and this negative elevation change together, we're going to end up with the end result, the overall change. Does that make sense? I went up, and then I came back down, and adding those together gives me the overall change. That's the same idea with this reaction business. Oh, and that's called Hess's Law. Uh, the change in enthalpy for a stepwise process is the sum of the enthalpy changes of the steps. Let's do um, an example of this. We are asked to find delta H for this reaction. And this is the information that we're given. These reactions have known enthalpy changes, and they're listed here. And so just with this information, we need to find out what the enthalpy change for that reaction is. So what we need to do is figure out how to combine these three reactions so that they would add up to this reaction. You can add chemical equations just like you can add mathematical equations. So let's add a math equation first. So if 
we have x plus y equals 2, and um, x minus 3 equals 4y, perhaps. I'm just making this up. We can add those together. So we've got x plus x, that's going to be 2x, and then we've got plus y and minus 3. And then over here, we've got 4y and 2. And then we've got four y's on this side and one y on that side, so we can say, well, get rid of that and change this to a three. Do you remember doing something like that in math class? Someone, yeah, some vague, vague recollection, perhaps. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do, but with the chemical equations. So this kind of can be a sort of a puzzle because if I just add them as they're written, it's not going to work out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the end result that I want. And I'm going to say, well, I need this as a reactant, and this as a reactant, and I need this as a product. And then I look at these guys, and there's N2 and O2 in here. And I don't want that to show up anywhere in my end result. Here's NO. Well, that needs to be a product. Um, here's NO, so that's a product, and 2O is over here. There's only one that has N2O, and that's right here. So maybe I'll start with that one. In my final reaction, though, I only have one N2O. So maybe I'll divide this reaction by two so that I can get just N2O. So I'm going to start out with N2O gas. I'm going to try to line this up better than I did yesterday. And then if I'm going to divide this reaction by 2, let's do it like this. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So then I end up with N2 and half of O2. That's okay. If I multiply the equation by one half, I need to multiply the enthalpy change by one half as well. So delta H equals negative 163.2 kilojoules times one half. So here I've got my reactant, N2O. I also want to have NO2 as a reactant, and so I look to find NO2. Here's NO2, but it's listed as a product here, so I need to write this reaction backwards. So I'm reversing that one, and I only want one NO2. So I'm, I'm going to cut that one in half as well. And just so you know, I did this problem yesterday um, a little bit differently. So if this isn't clear, you might want to try that one. So I'm going to multiply all of the coefficients by one half here. So I'm going to get NO gas. No. So I need to write it backwards, yeah. Does that make It'll change the sign. So when I write it backwards, then I get um, NO here and one half O2. And then delta H. Here it was negative. I'm going to make it positive because I flipped it around. Yes? We're cutting that one in half because of the nitrogen. I'm cutting this one in half because. I'm looking here and I'm seeing I only want one NO2. And so there's, there's another way to do it, and that's what I did yesterday, where you don't do that, but and then you end up dividing by two at the end. I just thought I'd do it different today. So then this is going to be plus 113.1 kilojoules and divided by two. Okay, I changed the sign. 
because I reverse the reactants and products. So now I've got the two reactants that I want, and they even have the correct coefficients, so this is all nice. Um, but I've got oxygen over here, and I don't want that to st stick around. So I need to use this equation. If I have oxygen as a reactant and oxygen as a product, essentially they're canceling each other out. What, what really is going on, if we were doing this stepwise, is that this reaction generates half a mole of oxygen, and this reaction generates half a mole of oxygen, and then this reaction com comes along, and the mole of oxygen is used up. And that's how it doesn't show up at the end. So the one in the middle there, I'm just going to use it as is. and O. And so I'll leave delta H alone. There it was, plus 182.6. So now I'm going to add these together. So I've got N2O plus NO2. And then what's, what's happening with this N2? There's N2 as a reactant and N2 as a product. So they cancel out. The N2 that was formed here gets used up over here. And then I've got one half and one half. That's a total of one mole of oxygen and one mole of oxygen. And so those get used up or cancel out. And then what I've got left here is, um, wait, not two. I've got one NO here and two NO there. So any questions about how I added those equations? Now we're going to add the delta H's. So we've got negative 163.2 uh, times one half plus positive 113.1 times one half plus 182.6 equals so delta H is 157 I'm going to have to round up here because I should only have one decimal place with the adding 157.6 kilojoules Any questions? Easier than it looks. In some ways, it is. Yeah, if you can just kind of take a step back and, and be able to really see what you're doing, it's not that bad. It's just some adding. Yes? Yeah, so like on the first and second, uh, Um, I, I'm rearranging these. This one, I, I kept the reactant, the reactants, and the product, the product. Um, so I didn't change the sign. But I changed the coefficients. Um, I divided by 2. And so then on delta H, I had to divide by 2. On the second equation, I reversed the reactants and products and divided by 2. Um, because when I took this one down here, um, I, I was looking to get rid of the nitrogen and the oxygen that were showing up over here. I had one nitrogen, and so I wanted the coefficient here to be one. And I had two halves, which is one whole, of oxygen, and so I wanted this to be one as well. And then I didn't talk about it, but adding these two together gives me three, which is the coefficient that I'm looking for over there. Any other questions? <laughs>